for events with more than 100 people. For booking information, contact Kendra at 404-578-1454. Located less than a half a mile off of I-20 off Fulton Industrial, we are Tap Out Studios of Hollywood, 620 Interchange Drive. Tap Out Studios of Hollywood, inspiring creativity, changing lives, and making dreams come true. Are you in need of a dessert for a special event? Maybe a custom birthday cake. I know, it's your wedding day and you want a cake that will stimulate your taste buds and capture and create the memories for that special day. Well, Sweet Destination should be your choice. Let master sweet designer Montevia Gamble create a unique and delicious cake for your special occasion. But that's not all. Sweet Destination also creates other desserts from cheesecakes, homemade fudge, brownies, cookies, pies, cake pops, cupcakes, and just about anything that you can think of. So check them out at SweetDestinations.com or on Facebook under Sweet Destinations. Remember, the greatest conversations take place on the road to the sweetest destinations of the human mind. So let's do more than business. Let's make memorable moments. We are Sweet Destinations. Everyone needs a way to add gold to their financial portfolio. Carrot Bars International makes gold affordable to the masses with the FreeGoldPlan.com. Get gold in 24 karat 999.9% pure gold bullion and small affordable weights. Save your money in gold and even get paid to share with others how to do the same. No broker fees, no setup fees, and with referrals, your gold can be free. Go to thefreegoldplan.com. That's thefreegoldplan.com now. Honey, what are we going to do with all these bills? It doesn't make any sense. We make more than enough money to cover everything, but we're still in a hole. Let's check out Madam Money. Madam Money? Who is that? She is a financial expert who helps people like us set and reach our financial goals. This is great. With her help, we can do all the things that we talked about. That's right. Now we can take that vacation we've always wanted and not feel stressed. Hi, this is Tara Jackson, also known as Madam Money, and I can help you clear up all of your financial diseases and those pesky financial STDs. See, this is why I love you. Yes, I know. So check out Madam Money online at tarajackson.com. T-A-R-R-A jackson.com. Hey, this is Dolores Punch Kimmer, and we're back with Let's Communicate, and I'm here with my special guest. Hi, all right, Brandon Price, <laughs> CEO. And Brandon, we were talking at the break, and we were talking about um, what this event today was all about. Well, you know, today was a day where we actually honored our veterans uh, who literally have given their lives for us. And I think the way of us giving back to say, you know, if you are a veteran and you served, uh, we, we, th coming back to the United States, you should have a place to sleep and, a, and, a food and some food to eat. Mm -hmm. um, one of the events also today, uh, unfortunately last year we had a fire in one of our transitional facilities. Mm -hmm. um, Home Depot, uh, we like to give them uh, props in terms of coming out and actually doing something about it. And so they came out uh, a few weeks back and literally donated and build us literally a new facility. Wow. Um, they improved a lot of our uh, things that needed improvement. Mm -hmm. And um, they literally took the opportunity to come out and rebuild us a new facility after the fire. And so we definitely wanted to give uh, some great appreciation to Home Depot mm -hmm. and also other corporations who have participated. Bank mm -hmm. of America, Deloitte & Touche, which is coming out to do uh, a major paint job for the facility mm -hmm. as well. And so it's all about getting our corporate partners to understand that, uh, you know, everybody has a family member who served mm -hmm. and it's important that we honor those memories and we honor those people mm -hmm. uh, regardless of how they were discharged or regardless of may have what just personal things that may have happened in their lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very good this um, 
So how many people did you have here today? Quite a few. We had about a hundred people. We clocked out wow. over just throughout the facility. Wow. Um, and some of the, you know, we had people ranging from corporate partners, mm -hmm. uh, supporters, and volunteers. Uh, we even had a few elected officials come wow. out. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, it was really good to see that uh, people from around the spectrum they care. Mm -hmm. um, we say we care every day, but it's important to make sure that other people uh, have that same care and concern for our homeless veterans. Because here's the bottom line. Uh, the veteran of uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. they're slowly aging and they're slowly fading away. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new generation of veterans who are coming home homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a big deal when we're saying the average homeless veteran now is, is about 30 to 32 years old. Wow. Wow. Um, now, in, the, in um, the buildings that you have, where the, uh, most of the guests astonished to see because I was when I came back here I haven't been here for about four months five okay, months okay. I, I'm just astonished to see how beautiful this place is I mean it, I everything wasn't painted green or the right. olive green right. when I came the last time it is just fantastic how and the job that you all have done fantastic well you know part of that is our like I said our corporate sponsors mm -hmm. uh, another part of that is the veterans themselves have came in and said you know they, they assist uh, our contractors when it comes to building mm -hmm. and you know we forget that these guys you know when they serve these guys are working on in some cases tanks trucks mm -hmm. nuclear war you know and so it's important that to say hey these guys have some very serious skills that can translate over into corporate America mm -hmm. uh, whether it's working on the back end or doing engineering for Northam Grumman or Lockheed Martin etc uh, we've got the talent here on the facility now it's just time to find it and use it Wow, fantastic. So uh, most of the guys, they probably have some, they have they participated with the corporations to help the, get the facility in order? Absolutely. Uh, and also corporations and, and other uh, organizations have also came out uh, and served a meal. Uh, and so what we do on the weekend, we, we have that time where any corporation, organization, sports teams, so to all you, you know, Atlanta Hawks and Atlanta Falcons, we're calling on your support, uh, Braves too. They come out and they come out and literally serve a meal Saturdays and Sundays and just have time to just talk to our veterans. Um, and it's rewarding from both standpoints. It re it's rewarding from our veterans because our veterans really get to know that, you know, it doesn't matter on your status. People care about you. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other side, uh, some of our corporate sponsors, some of our civic organization key people, they have even said, you know, after they left this place, it's just it's it's been an amazing journey to see what we're doing for our veterans. Right. So. It, I mean, just the, just the um, improvements in the last five months have been are fantastic that, that I'm looking at. So um, this is a, absolutely a, a fantastic organization. Thank you. Um, I was going to talk to Franz a little bit. He told me he had a little impediment going on, so he didn't want to talk about it. So do you know the history of VEO? Can you tell us a little bit about I it? I do. I do. VEO, you know, started in 2008 um, and essentially was an organization that, you know, Franz Fortune, uh, who formerly was with United Way, mm -hmm. um, he really saw an opportunity and he saw a need, the fact that veterans uh, were coming home mm -hmm. and essentially were being left behind. Now, you know, we don't want to get to the blame game, but mm -hmm. we knew someone had to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, him, along with uh, his family and a few other colleagues, came together uh, to put what is in place now, Veterans Empowerment Organization. Um, the opportunity is that now it's not just an issue, a Georgia issue. This is a national issue. Right. And so other states uh, have solicited to say, you know, how are you guys doing that? What does it take to do something like that? Um, and I think that what's happening is that although we know the federal government, uh, and the state governments, they want to do something. Many mm -hmm. times they don't have the resources to do uh, to really find and seek those veterans who uh, unfortunately have been left behind. And so that's where organizations like Veterans Empowerment Organization can come together and find those outliers uh, that some people have forgotten about, those, mm -hmm. those forgotten warriors. Mm -hmm. Do you team together with other veterans organizations? Oh, we do. We do. Actually, at the event today, we had a representative for, from the governor's office mm -hmm. um, who heads the, gutter, the governor's veterans affairs issues. We've got a couple of organizations, Safe America is a partner. Mm -hmm. And so we've teamed up uh, with a series of other veteran-based organizations to mm -hmm. really uh, combat the issue of homeless veterans, mm -hmm. uh, unemployment in the veterans community. Um, uh, mental health and mental illness, suicide prevention mm -hmm. in the veterans community, all of those factors play a role in essentially what we do uh, to better service our veterans and to welcome them when they get back home. Mm -hmm. Do you, you work with the uh, new Fort McPherson project? Uh, not, 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 not directly, not in my role. 
Okay, okay. Uh, there, just to give you a little bit of information about that, um, Fort McPherson is supposed to be doing out of the, they were going to close that facility. So now uh, you can send the guys over there to get um, out treatment, any kind of out treatment. Okay. Well, I mean, even with that, like I said, we, you know, we've got uh, lots of partners mm -hmm. um, and we've strategically tried to get partners for the needs that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, like I said, those, need, you know, we provide housing, but you know, we also have a limited set of housing. And mm -hmm. so, uh, if we are overbooked, we'd like to be able to refer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we look at, um, we take all donations. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we had, too bad we didn't get to take a stroll into our dining hall because it also housing not only is not houses not only food donations, but when our guys are going out in the workforce, mm -hmm. we want them to be as prepared and we want them to be as appearance-based as possible. And so we actually have clothes that they can keep, shoes, belts, clothes, ties handkerchief like i got mm -hmm. so that they put on a good image uh when they go out into the real world because as you know and i know uh, the real world can be i mean it, it's a tough place out there yeah and so literally from a competitive standpoint we want our guys to be uh competitive we want our guys to be ready prepared mm -hmm. uh willing and able mm -hmm. and uh so far we've done that wow wow so you're in a really deep partnership with the va uh, we, we work with the VA, mm -hmm. um, but we are privately funded. Oh, I see. And we do that for a reason. You mm -hmm. know, we do that because, you know, like I know, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, when things are compensated for, strings are attached. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be, we're able to do the job of transitional housing assistance, uh, something that the VA and, and most co corporate, uh, excuse me, most municipal and state governments and federal governments uh, are unable to necessarily do. And so we want to have that need. And uh, private dollars has helped us uh, really kind of get into the fight of saving homeless veterans. I see. So it, it allows you to have more uh, control of the of the program versus if you did it with a. Well, just just just. It gives you more strategic. It's, it's important for us to be strategic in combating mm -hmm. and finding ways to actually um, work with homeless veterans and really get them off the street and really have a successful uh, measurement of our programs and what we do. Mm -hmm. So are you getting, are you using the United Way Street to Home initiative to get the veterans or how do you, how are you, you're going out just, you, you guys are going out and doing outreach and then you, when you locate someone, they just send them here. Is, is it just you guys doing it or is it other people doing it? It's, well, the thing is that that's the good part of marketing mm -hmm. is, you know, we've actually had vets uh, from other states say, you know, we're willing to find a way to get to you because we need service. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important. You know, we do work with United Way on a lot of initiatives to bring veterans here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, word is getting around very fast in Georgia that, uh, you know, if you're homeless and you can get a bus trip or you can make it here, uh, we'll take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. So you don't turn anyone away? No. Wow. So if you have referred to capacity, what would you do? Well, that's the power of referrals. Oh, I see. I see. But, but, but typically, when we go out, we actually find, uh, we make sure that we have enough space. We, d we normally do have space mm -hmm. uh, for any veteran that we have. And the thing is, we don't, you know, a lot of places, um, if you don't have ID mm -hmm. uh, or if you don't have certain qualifications, mm -hmm. um, that could affect your residence or you even getting housed. We don't, we don't play by those rules. If we have the space, uh, then we take anyone who is, who's, who is served. Wow. So um, if, when you do a referral, if you had to, let's say you had to do a referral, would they still get connected to you? They still would be connected to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we also, are, like I said, we're not only just a housing component, mm -hmm. but we are a job employer mm -hmm. and we also are a social service provider. Mm -hmm. And so um, just because you don't live here doesn't mean we can't service you. Wow, very cool. And so you told me that there's a computer lab in, in right. this building. Um, they use the computer, do you do computer training courses and all of that? We do, uh, but typically we use that for, you know, the thing about the Internet is nowadays uh, you cannot find, seek, confirm employment without a computer. Mm -hmm. That's just the way the future is going. That's where the jobs are going. Mm -hmm. And so we want our guys to be as prepared virtually and to be able to, you know, they have an address here. Mm -hmm. um, so many of our guys have cell phones, mm -hmm. but it's important that they can, you know, we can work with them on their resumes, helping them with their cover letters uh, through our computer experience here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a couple of our computers donated from other private organizations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really gets the fact that there is nothing stopping these guys from succeeding as long as we have the tools to help them get to where they need to be. Wow. Wow. This sounds like a fantastic program. So uh, now what? 
Um, do you have washing machines for them? And we do. Okay, we do. wow. So you have all the ancillary services in order to make them successful. Exactly. So um, do they They have to maintain their own everything, or do you have well, to? Well, they, they do, but that's why it's so important to, you know, one of the things we've mastered doing is getting rid of distractions. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, one, a big part of the unemployment process that few people talk about mm -hmm. is the distractions. You mm -hmm. know, the TVs, the, mm -hmm. the, the radio players. Mm -hmm. You know, we want our guys, typically, if you don't have distractions, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be quicker to get out of here mm -hmm. uh, and actually do what it is that you need to do, whether it's su succeed, uh, uh, get employment, mm -hmm. whether it's making sure that you can get your VA benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, our, it's our job to help you get that and to make sure that you now have, you know, one of the things, when a guy goes out and he wants to, he comes home and he wants to, if he has a mental uh, mental illness, uh, one of the issues that I found is that, you know, a lot of times you have to prove to the VA that you actually have a mental illness to qualify for your benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things is it could take a person, you know, three to six months mm. just to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. So now the question is if you're not working mm -hmm. and if you're not independently wealthy mm -hmm. and it takes you six months, and your rent is due in six weeks, mm -hmm. then you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things my pastor always used to say is, you know, if your outflow mm -hmm. is more than your income, then you will have a downfall. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of these guys have had that downfall. And now it's our job to get them back, not only on uh, back in good graces in terms of getting them back into society, mm -hmm. but making sure through our bank accounts that we're in the process of setting up uh, through various private banks. Now we're teaching people fiscal responsibility as well. Well, so the guys that are waiting for benefits, yeah. um, what is their typical day? Do they have to, do they have to do something here to stay here? Well, no, no. I mean, essentially, you know, as long as a person is working, they're working with our case managers. Mm -hmm. That's really a question for our case managers because mm -hmm. they see day to day. Each guy is different. Each mm -hmm. guy has a different set of issues. Uh, he's got a different set of problems, and he's got a different timeline. Mm -hmm. So where it may take one guy you know, two months to get benefits, it may take another guy a year just to get out of here because not on top of the benefits, but now you're dealing with the mental illness issue. Now you're dealing with uh, a social issue. Mm -hmm. Now you're dealing, you know, many of our guys do have criminal records. Some mm -hmm. do, some don't. Mm -hmm. Now we're dealing with that issue. And so every guy uh, has their own timeline. I see. So the, it's up to the case manager to exactly. monitor that timeline and then to make sure that they stay on track? Exactly. Wow. Wow. So um, a typical person, it takes them on the average to get through the program. I would say six months. And, it, and when they leave the program, what is, what is their... Um, what is the goal? The goal is to be when when they leave here, they're going into permanent housing and they have a job. Or their goal is to their goal is whatever they they deem want successful. it to be. But okay, what do you deem it successful? Well, we deem what they deem successful. <laughs> but, but but no no no. I think I think typically we look at can you sustain on yourself? Mm -hmm. And typically, so that usually means a job. So they're well, employed. Well, it means permanent employment. Or oh, excuse me, excuse me, permanent housing, mm -hmm. uh, permanent employment, okay, and or uh, disability, and di or disability, mm -hmm. and we find and we monitor out two years out, and so you know we make sure that not only did you get a job, but even when it comes to our job placement, we make sure we put qualified people with qualified roles. This is not a numbers game for us to look good. It's an opportunity for us to make sure we house, uh, excuse me, that we employ the most qualified person for the most qualified role, and the advantage is they just happen to be veterans. Wow. That's important here. It's not that we're hiring vets. Mm -hmm. It's that we're, qualifying quali we're, we're, we're hiring qualified people who happen to be veterans. Right. Now, uh, do you have a lot of veterans working for you here? Uh, we do. We do. We've got a uh, majority of our facility, uh, they are ex-vets. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about it, you know, even though the majority of our campus uh, is African-American, we have, you know, white veterans, Asian ver veterans, uh, like, like I mentioned before, female veterans, Hispanic veterans. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the military, for anybody who's ever served, um, you know, we they, the military doesn't see black and white. Mm -hmm. The military typically seems green, light green, dark green. Social security number. Social security <laughs> number. And so it's important that they mm -hmm. really understand that, you know, this is a brotherhood. Right. Um, and if your fellow man is down, you know, you don't care about rank. You don't care about any of that. You're saying, how can I help? Mm hmm. Very good. Um, this is one of my favorite programs. I think um, I've since it started uh, when Spron started and, and came to one of the United Way meetings and told everyone what he was going to do. 
it just the, his idea was fantastic and to see it actually materialize right. has been fantastic that this um, that this actually is and now it's expanding you're saying you know it was funny today so during my speech um, you know I had my preacher talk today mm -hmm. and uh, as I was walking there was a gentleman who had been here for about four months mm -hmm. and he was as I was standing on the podium he was walking behind me with his briefcase and bags mm -hmm. and that was a powerful statement because what it's saying is that now this guy's new life mm -hmm. is getting ready to start mm -hmm. powerful wow Real powerful so i mean that that you were able to that that all the visitors were able to see a success story actually happen right. in front of their face right. that's that's really fantastic well is there anything else that you'd like to talk about well uh, to all the people out there in Radio Land, uh, we take all donations. No, I'm joking. No, but, but, but how, no, how no, can they no, get in we, contact we, with we you? Do, we do take all donations. Mm -hmm. Feel free, uh, VEOUSA.org. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to come out and serve a meal on the weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, we welcome that. And it's important that, you know, we want the public to come out and see because the bottom line is we are all, no matter how wealthy you are, and we are all two or three paychecks away from being in this same predicament. Mm-hmm. Uh, VEO.org. Um, you can reach us at 404 889 8710, and we are located at 373 West Lake, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia. And that's all we have for about right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a fantastic program. Um, if any of you are vets and you need the help, please don't hesitate to get in contact with VEO. This is a, a very good organization to be a part of. And um, thank you for thank allowing you. me to interview you. Absolutely. And this has been a fantastic program. This has um, been Dolores Punch Kimo with Let's Communicate. Remember that if we do not get involved in our community and make the changes that we seek, then nothing will get changed. Until next time, I'll see you then.